Hi, this is your host Sobhan Bharatiya and welcome to TFR Insights. And today we have with us Deepak Giridhar Gopal, CTO of Puppet. Puppet recently announced kind of its uh, evolution, right, to an integrated automation platform. Uh, the, the times are changing, business is changing, industry is changing, uh, technologies are changing, so it, it's apt to evolve with the changing times. So first of all, Deepak, uh, it's great to have you on the show. Let's talk about this evolution of Puppet. Uh, before I go to talk about the evolution, I would also like to ask you, if you look at Puppet today, what kind of company, what kind of project, what kind of platform we are looking at? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, the Puppet of you know the end of 2020, I would say, is essentially, you know, what we're really trying to recognize and respect is that IT in 2020 is a big tent. There's all kinds of varied people looking to automate a wide variety of things. There's all kinds of different... Um, modalities and architectures in play, people using different kinds of platforms. So I think really uh, our focus as a company is to try and address kind of the needs of the many, you know, just trying to really make sure that we can uh, handle all the needs and problems of, you know, all the different customers that we have and, you know, maintain kind of parity with them as they continue to evolve. Uh, so, you know, I think that's really the governing philosophy. It's not sort of like, one way of doing things is the ideal way of doing it. You know, I firmly believe as someone building all this stuff for Puppet that, you know, the the choice and variety is really crucial now, especially given how much choice and variety there is in how people build and architect and design systems. So, you know, you have to have, I think, as vendors, we all need to adapt, I think. And we need to recognize and respect that this idea that customers are all going to lock on to this one standard it's just, it's probably not going to happen. So instead, if we want to help them solve their problems, we need to be respectful for uh, the way that their problems are evolving and that there's just an increased variety of different ways they're trying to do stuff now than ever before, even during a pandemic, right? Or perhaps because of the pandemic, uh, they're moving much more quickly. Right. I think the way I look at it, as, as we help customers in their own transformation journey, we ourselves have to transform because the technologies are changing so fast that we cannot continue to offer the same stack of solutions uh, to the customers who are on their journey. So uh, there are a lot of things that uh, Puppet announced uh, uh, this month. So let's just uh, walk through them one by one based on how you see either the evolution of the, the project, the, the product line, the company, as well as the platform itself. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, the first thing we really announced is more of a, a concerted effort around tying our products together as part of a platform. So, you know, we did launch the uh, Puppet Enterprise platform, which is, you know, it contains all of the underlying capabilities that people have come to expect out of Puppet and Puppet Enterprise for, you know, for a long time. We've been solving a ton of customer problems for, you know, years at this point. But the new things that we've tried to add on and the new products that we've launched really build on that platform and extend its capabilities to make it more applicable to a wider variety of different IT shops or IT teams uh, in a wider variety of customers. So one thing that we announced was uh, Puppet Comply, uh, which is basically a more um, buttoned down kind of streamlined user experience for doing compliance for infrastructure, but doing that at scale. Uh, you don't necessarily have to be super heavy into infrastructure as code. You don't have to necessarily be a programming expert or be able to, you know, solve a complex computer science problem on a whiteboard in order to be able to figure out uh, how to keep your stuff compliant and secure. Uh, so, you know, our customers were pretty vocal in telling us that they wanted something that was easy to drop in or get absorbed by other teams beyond just the traditional infrastructure as code teams inside their organizations so that they could have um, a really smart and efficient way of assessing like whether their infrastructure meets all the compliance standards, external or internal, uh, and then actually automatically fix you know, what's wrong. And I think that's a strength of Puppet as a platform is that we've always had the ability to actually reach out and flip bits and toggle switches and change the state of things. So um, in many ways, that's kind of the hard part for a lot of our customers in terms of compliance. There's no shortage of tools that do the scanning and they present you the piece of glass. But I think the, the downside of the piece of glass is if you try to reach through it to actually touch something, <laughs> you know, you end up with a lot of broken glass and you end up kind of bloody if I torture that metaphor to the maximum extent possible. So I, I think in a lot of ways, we kind of solved most of the harder problems first 
as a company, which was how do you take action and change the state of different systems at scale? Uh, and that's something that we've been doing forever, which is why like tons of different companies use us and we power like, you know, a ton of the internet at this point. Um, so, you know, taking that and applying it to a more vertically oriented kind of problem, like dealing with compliance, uh, I think is really interesting to me because it puts the power of uh, Puppet in the hands of people that don't necessarily have to be super conversant in, you know, they don't have to go super deep in understanding all the nuance of how to make changes on a system. Instead, they can have a really streamlined scan to identify, to triage, to fix, you know, workflow. Uh, so that's comply. And, you know, so far the customer response has been really good on that one. And I'm, I'm pretty happy to, to see how that one's working out. Um, we also launched another product called uh, Connect, which is similarly, we got a bunch of uh, feedback from customers around a desire to have a lighter weight way of putting more task-based automation in the hands of a broader set of IT administrators. So not necessarily like the hardcore SREs of the world um, who are already using like Puppet and Bolt and a lot of our other tools to help solve their problems. But now increasingly, especially during COVID, a lot of our customers are having more traditional systems administrators be called upon to do more interesting, more complicated infrastructure automation. So what Connect is about is it's really a lighter weight weight. It's based on Bolt, which is our open source task-based uh, orchestration system uh, that you know thousands of people are using. So you know, definitely thank the Bolt community for helping us kind of refine the feature set of that one. And Connect really puts more of a turnkey kind of appliance-like experience around it, as well as team features so that a team of systems administrators could do more things like runbook style automation or task-oriented automation or kind of simple workflows uh, that can help automate a lot of the um, kind of activities that they have going on as part of their day-to-day. -day. But they can do that in a lightweight way that's targeted to just their sliver of the infrastructure. And if they need to kind of graduate to a much broader scale, we have other things in the portfolio that helps them. And uh, the last thing that we announced, uh, which is what I've been personally doing a lot of the uh, work and development on, is uh, Relay, uh, which we launched public beta for in uh, a couple of months ago. That's available at relay.sh. And that's more on the opposite end of the continuum, which is more for cloud native environments or people running in very cloud centric architectures or they have applications built making heavy use of either containers, cloud functions, or third party APIs and services. And what Relay is, is really our, our, uh, our vision of what automation problems really look like in that world. And to me, in that universe, it starts to look less like, how do I provision a thing? There's 28 different tools that help you provision things in the cloud. And instead, the surface area that you want to automate moves from beyond just that low level plumbing to how do you get components to talk to each other? How do you automate the human workflows around that infrastructure? Uh, if your architecture now involves a bunch of third-party APIs or services, then suddenly accomplishing even ops 101 kind of tasks now involves you touching 28 different pieces. You know, our, our rush to kind of turn everything into microservices has now made architectures more complicated in many cases to operate and administer. Uh, so we believe the answer to that is workflows as the core, like, primitive uh, technological concept. You can have generic steps that themselves are containers, can contain arbitrary logic, and we provide users sort of a, a low-code way of stitching those arbitrary steps together uh, and then have them be triggered based on events because we also have a strong belief that in cloud-native environments, uh, your automation needs to move at the speed of uh, which, at the, at the speed of the infrastructure itself, which is very fast. Things go up and down all the time. Uh, so if your automation only works at the speed of GitOps, which is at the speed of a human commit, my contention is I don't think that's fast enough. I think it needs to be much more event driven in order to keep pace with what people are doing. Uh, so that's the whirlwind tour of everything that we uh, that we kind of announced. Right. I will go back to the announcement of Comply. Is there any specific reason also, especially in the cloud native world, uh, we are talking about security a lot. Security is no longer an afterthought. It's no longer someone else's problem. Uh, then also um, government agencies are a lot of, you know, uh, because of this pandemic also, a lot of sensitive operations are also moving online. So was there any specific reason to also focus on comply or is just the way you see the evolution of the platform? I think there were a couple of main reasons. I mean, people have been using Puppet to enforce, to do policy enforcement on systems for a long time. 
However, I think now what we're starting to see is um, more of a, uh, I think companies have started to get it, that they can't think of security as an afterthought. Um, it has to be baked in earlier. So I think we've started to see more interest from companies earlier on in development processes to start saying, hey, how do I get earlier validation uh, of all the infrastructure that's in play? And for that, you know, you're looking at perhaps a lot leaner teams that are developing these things that are trying to do security earlier on. So they need a slightly different user experience than what I would say is a generic uh, policy enforcement engine. You know, I, I think the demand has moved from having an engine that's really flexible itself to instead having a good user experience built on top of that engine that's easy for people to just kind of... Uh, click the buttons, pick a couple of standards they want to do compliance checks on, and then automatically have that happen. I think that's one thing. But I think, um, from my point of view, I think people are looking forward and they're saying, look, if I can't even wrap my arms around my, uh, my on-prem virtualized infrastructure from a compliance standpoint, what does that even mean if I'm looking forward to the cloud? Uh, where how, I need to have a better understanding of how to translate these compliance standards to an environment where maybe the tech is actually ahead of the regulations in a lot of regards. So I think it's those things that are uh, really, it's, it's a high level of demand, I think, that I see in the customer base around desire for security and acknowledgement that compliance can't be an afterthought and people being smart and thinking ahead and saying, if I don't think about compliance now, once I move to a cloud environment where I can accidentally make an S3 bucket and accidentally flip it to world readable, you know, and everything is exposed. That's a big deal. So uh, caution, I think, is uh, smart caution, I think, is sort of the, the thing I, I hear more from customers. So they're smart enough now to not say no all the time to anything and say no is my security answer. It's who instead they want to say yes, but they need tools to help them get there. So when we look at Puppet, so uh, the way I'm looking at it is like, you know, you're building all the the technologies services in inside a, a platform why do you think that in this especially in the microservices uh, function as service word cloud native word uh, platform approach is the number one right approach second is that you can be opinionated you can bring all the things at the same time you all customers also want flexibility you know they want to bring in the tools that they also want to use so how do you enable users to off first of all offer flexibility number two is that at the same time while they do want flexibility sometimes they also want tightly integrated stack so they don't have because if you look at just cncf landscape there are so many projects <laughs> that you cannot keep up yeah. with so so it's it's pretty maddening <laughs> exactly so talk about that yeah, I think um, this is something that we've learned the hard way, I would say, over the past several years, just in being a very open source centric company, because we have an open source community where a lot of times they that, you know, parts of that community are really looking for something that's more generic, more um, uh, it's more of a platform they can build extensions and things like that on top of. So, um, you know, that's a big part. The community is a big reason why we're as successful as we are today. And we've always had to try to balance that against uh, commercial customers, you know, oftentimes more commercial customers that are just saying, look, I get that it's a platform, but I really want something that solves my problem now. So the way I think about it is um, probably, I think everybody is looking for a couple of different things. I think everybody is looking for time to value, you know, which is the sort of buzzwordy thing, but, but I think it's real. I think even someone like me, who's a builder and a gearhead, and I love, ha you know, hacking things apart and, and, I love looking at the code of a lot of stuff. Even still, I still really care about time to value a lot. However, what I am always cognizant of looking forward is I don't want to pick a set of tools. I don't want to bet my application or my infrastructure on tools that are not, that don't have forward looking flexibility. So even though I want something that I can get going with really quickly, I, I always make sure that, you know, I always ask, um, what does the API surface area look like for this product? And if there isn't one, that's a really bad sign. Is there an open source community around this thing? And if so, can I see, you know, are people constantly evolving this product? That's a good sign to me that it's flexible because people are continuing to evolve it. Uh, is there an extension or plugin ecosystem around this tool? And if there's a good ecosystem around it, that's a pretty good sign to me that uh, it is a flexible engine 
right? So, um, you know, I, I think I think people want it all, <laughs> but it's our challenge as the people that make tools to simultaneously respect people's time. And no one's going to want to use a tool that I produce if it's going to take them nine months to get any value out of it. Like those days are gone. You, you know, that's nobody wants to do that anymore. And I think that's a good thing. But at the same time, nobody wants to use sort of the the it's so simplified that it won't scale with their problems and it won't help them solve more complicated things in the future. So that's why everything that I just mentioned is either, you know, built on open source technology, like everything we launch, like comply, connect, uh, puppet itself, bolt, relay, they're all either built on a lot of open source technology, either ours or other people's. They all have ecosystems for content built around them. And the development and ongoing work in a lot of these things, the open source components, any of our customers can go and see what we're doing. So they don't have to take our word for it being flexible. <laughs> they can they can test it for themselves, right? They can check our math. And I think that has a nice way of both being transparent to the customer and it keeps me honest, <laughs> right? So I can't make up a story about how we're evolving a thing. And, you know, it's easy to, it's easy to check the facts, I think. So, um, but I think that's not just for us. I think any company trying to really make it in the infrastructure space is going to have to balance time to value with uh, longer term flexibility uh, as a product. We talked about the, the evolution of the company. Let's look at some external factors that are also kind of uh, affecting the way companies are evolving. Um, I mean, there are so many things that you can talk about. I would like to talk only about uh, edge computing today. How How is edge computing because you can look at edge from different perspective you can think of it as you know data center which is or you can think of small devices so uh, is is edge also kind of having any impact in this evolution of uh, puppet yeah I, I think i mean the way um the way i think about edge at least from what i hear from customers is uh it's almost an abstract thing where um uh, a lot of companies that i talk to a lot of our customers will report back to me that they consider uh, more like endpoint devices and things like that, part of you know their edge computing stuff. Uh, especially now in the age of COVID where a lot of customers now have to deal with a ton of remote access and remote endpoints kind of accessing internal systems than they ever had before. Some of them would consider that edge as well. So, um, so definitely it means different things to different people, but the way I think about it is it's a radical expansion of how, um, Traditionally, people would consider their estate in terms of infrastructure, and it's easy to compartmentalize it. Oh, my estate is everything over here. You know, in the olden days, it's everything in this building right over there, or everything in these racks or this data center. And now it's everything in this cloud or that cloud or in this region. But I think Edge really messes with that whole thing because it says, well, it's really fluid and flexible. You don't know where stuff is. And I think Edge has given rise to a greater demand for you know, more zero trust networking, things that in many ways were, uh, uh, we've been doing for a long time, like configuration management is a thing where you know, in the immutable infrastructure containerized cloud world, you know, people uh, have different answers for that. But if you're starting to talk about Edge devices that you know, um, are really stripped down uh, I also see this a lot with um, customers are increasingly talking to me about like IoT, not necessarily consumer IoT, but more the number of devices that now are participating on their network. And for a lot of them, it, you know, it's still, they have very basic problems dealing with these devices. How do I ensure that they are configured the way I want? Are they behaving the way I want? How do I monitor them? Uh, so I'm not saying it's uh, an old school way of looking at the world, but in a weird way, it's like a, a different sort of on ramp in terms of infrastructure technology has come from the side. And they're faced with a lot of the same problems that the hardcore infrastructure folks like me have had to deal with. We, we thought were solved problems. And it turns out like many things in computing, what we thought was a solved problem, something else comes up where you say, wow, really? Your biggest problem with your edge devices is you can't you know, set credentials on them. Okay. Uh, well, good news. We can help you with that. Uh, so I think, I think it's really interesting, you know, and I think this idea of having radically expanded footprint for computing is going to change a lot. Um, I think the fundamental principles will be the same, but how you apply them to a much broader set of devices, you don't know whether they're up or down. You don't know if you can trust them or not. I think that's going to put a lot of, um, stress on existing systems and vendors that didn't think about that. 
Uh, but I also think it's a good opportunity for the companies that have thought about it. Um, it's a good chance. It's a potential expansion of the market, I think. So uh, I think it's good. <laughs> if you're in the infrastructure business, more infrastructure is usually a good thing. <laughs> of course, <laughs> so. yeah. Deepak, thank you so much for taking time out from your schedule and talk about this evolution of Puppet and the focus area, which actually has not changed. It is evolving, you know. We have to change with customers, right? We have to be with them in their own journey that we are helping them on. So uh, once again, thank you for talking to me today and I look forward to talk to you again. Absolutely, thank you so much for having me. Look forward to the next time.